Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Professor Layton in the Diabolical Box. We are here to go over the special downloadable content puzzles that this game has. You can only access these through Nintendo Wi-Fi connection, which I do not have, unfortunately. However, I have once again borrowed a copy of the game from my good friend Hannah, and we are going to be accessing the files through, or the puzzles through those files. So without further ado, these don't seem like completed files, though, Hannah. Are you sure you got all the downloadable puzzles? Now uh, let's go with the... I'll trust the Hannah file, see what that has for us. Weekly puzzle. Uh, solve puzzles? It does seem to have all of them. Okay, I guess you don't need to beat the game in order to download all these, so... Thank you, Hannah of the Past, for doing that for us. Without further ado, let's go ahead and solve these last few puzzles. There are 33 of them for us to solve, so let's get cracking. Weekly puzzle number one, Trash Day. It's a sliding puzzle. Way to start an episode. The hints are always free, but there's only one of them. Unlock a new hint? Sure. If you think about moving the red vertical bars as a set, you should do just fine. And that's something I never really brought up in this game. You can't look at the hints and continue with the puzzle at the same time. You always have to close it out, which is really annoying. So... Uh, they do fix that in future latent games, but it was a problem for a really long time where, like, you couldn't actually look at hints and, uh, look at the puzzle and solve the puzzle at the same time, which was really lame. Uh, but yeah, starting us off with a sliding puzzle, joy. Uh, put this one in here, this in here, this in here. Uh, gonna get this down here. I seriously can't believe I finished this LP and all throughout my spring break. It's 11 at night right now, so I'm gonna go to sleep as soon as this is finished, and then I got school in the morning and a new semester. Hoorah, but I was not expecting to do it, but I sort of just powered through it right at the last second, and I had a lot of fun with it. It's a very common game, and it didn't like destroy my vocal cords, and I wasn't sick this time, so that's nice. It all turned out okay in the end, I think. Now it's just nothing but editing for the rest of, until like mid late June. That's all I'm going to be doing is just editing, which I'm not looking forward to, but uh, them's the breaks, I suppose. Uh, let's move that down there. Uh, but yeah, this is the last Let's Play I needed to record for year seven. So after that, I am just going to be an editing machine, just editing and waiting on voice actors. Both of which I'm not looking forward to because I'm like really stressing out about a lot of things, but... Uh, hopefully everything will turn out okay, and if it doesn't, then maybe I'll just need one more year to get things sorted out, and we'll uh, be back on track. And even if it isn't all okay, then, like, I just have to remember I'm only working on my own personal deadlines, so it isn't all that terrible if I end up taking a bit longer to do things than I would have liked, because in the end, I'm really the only one who cares about it. Piece of cake. Clean as a whistle. Doesn't that feel good? Sure. Saves automatically. Uh, these puzzles may be different depending on whether you're playing the US or the UK version. They might just have different names. Again, I'm just going over the US ones. But whatever. Up next is number two, Moving Tiles. Below is an addition equation using tiles numbered 0 to 9. There's just one little problem. The equation doesn't add up. Move only tiles to make the equation work. Only one solution involving the, f the fewest numbers of moves will be accepted. Here's your hint. There are plenty of solutions if you were, f were free to make the moves, make lots of moves, but you need to answer the involving the fewest moves. Also, only answer only numbers in the two rightmost columns should move. Another thing about these weekly puzzles, they don't give you pick a so feel free to mess up as much as you want. You won't get any sort of penalty for it, but also no sort of reward. Uh, is that it? Uh, no, just switch these, and I think you're good to go. Uh, yep, that's what it should look like. Except I lied, 69. I'm not joking, it's supposed to look like that. Very good. Up next, I'm just going to keep speeding through these because we got a lot to go through. And I have my uh, DS plugged in for the charger this time, so I don't have to worry about uh, speeding through it for the sake of saving the battery. Number three, wrong clocks. 
two, the two clocks in the illustration below both point exactly to noon. One hour later, one clock points to 101 and the other points to 1259. In other words, the clock is fast and uh, one clock is fast and the other is slow starting at noon. If these two clocks stay fast and slow at a constant ratio to one another, how many hours will it take until they both show the same time again? Here's your hint. The next time the clocks look the same, they won't be pointing at 12. Once you realize that, it's just a simple calculation problem. Or a simple lookup of the guide that tells you 360. This should do the oh, we do get Leighton in some of these. That's nice. I was worried it would just be Luke for the rest of the LP, but no, thankfully we have Leighton as well. Up next is Cut and Splice. I know splice was a word, but whatever. Take a look at the piece of wood in the illustration. Can you cut along the grid lines and create two pieces that fit together to make a new piece of wood eight squares high and eight squares wide? While you can rotate the cut pieces, keep in mind that you can't turn them over to make them fit. Here's your hint. Those two squares that stick out on the far right are part of an edge of the finished piece. So what you gotta do is do this and this. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Perfect. Up next is a wall of dice, or is this called in the UK? Stacked dice. Look at this dice. Look at this dice! Stacked below. Though you can't see it, the faces that touch other dice all share the same number. If that's the case, which number should go to the question mark? All these dice have the same layout of numbers. Here's your hint. It helps to know that opposite faces on a single die always add up to seven. Use that as the basis for your deduction. The solution is a simple one. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. You did it! I'm so happy! I'm also really tired, so I can't really comprehend what I'm saying and reading. And, like, usually I'm able to understand when I read the answer. I'm like, oh, I get it now. But right now I'm just like, uh, how did we get a one? What are we talking about? What? Uh, paper and scissors. Let's say you took a square piece of paper and cut off the corners to make the largest possible circle. But then you realize you needed a square piece instead and cut off the curves to make the largest possible square. How many times bigger was the original square than the one you have now? Here's your hint. The length of the side of the original square is equal to the diameter of the circle you cut. If you then cut the largest possible square from that circle, what would be the relationship of the circle's diameter to the new square? The answer is right after one. A two. This should do the trick. Huh, wonderful. You got it. Up next is uh, A, B plus B equals B, A, or as it's called in UK, A, B plus B equals B, A. Uh, the same thing, but like it has spaces in the UK. How riveting. Uh, what's the question? Let's replace the numbers in the equation 12 plus 12 equals 24. A is now 1, B is now 2, and C is now 4, which gives us the new equation AB plus AB equals BC. Now think about another such equation, AB plus B equals BA, where the letters may have different values from the sample equation above. What numbers could replace the A and keep the B to make the second equation true? Keep in mind that A and B are different numbers. Here's your hint. If you added B and B together, the digit in the ones place, the last digit of the of the resulting sum would equal an A. Since no two single digit numbers can add up to the more than 18, you know the number in the tens place of the sum of B plus B must be one. The only other value that influences the tens place in the solution is the A in A, B plus B. Therefore, A plus one must equal B. I understand some of those words, except not really. A equals A. 8 and B equals 9. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved.
Up next is puzzle number eight. What number? I said number eight. The numbers in the diagram below follow a certain rule. Some manipulation of adjacent numbers is used to, de to derive the numbers centered below them. So what number goes in the space marked with a question mark? The rule at work here is absolute, so there are no exceptions. Here's your hint. Subtraction? No, that's not it. You want to add, 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 add all you can! Jeez, capitalization of Professor Layton game? That's not very gentlemanly. The answer, however, is 16. And now to test my theory. Huh. <sighs> the next one's a sliding puzzle, god darn it. <sighs> But we're at the halfway point, which is nice, so maybe this might be the last one. Eh, who am I kidding? They're gonna torture me one last time before the end. Wait, no, it's number nine, not... Oh, because we got 16, that was the answer, so I thought we were on puzzle number 16. This poor mouse fell asleep and woke in... Awoke to find himself trapped in a bunch of blocks. Can you help free the unlucky mouse? Here's a hint. Bring down the green upside-down L at the top left corner in the same level as the top blue gate-shaped back... <laughs> I remember when I was about to sneeze in the LP and Sulu started talking, so it made me lose my sneeze, which was funny. Once you've cleared a path, drag the blue gate shaped block. You got it, dude. Uh, purple, let's go. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Still not as bad as the pancakes. Woo, he's free. I'm sure he'll find some way to repay you eventually. Uh, is that like a reference to like a future late game? Or is that being like sarcastic? Like, I'm sure he'll thank you someday. Maybe. Not really. Puzzle number 10. Different chickens. It's time to play Spot the Difference of A, B, and C, which one is identical to the panel on the left. The panel on the left is negative image in black and white and has been flipped from left to right. Here's your hint. A chicken's eye. The direction a chick is facing. Pay attention to those things too. The solution is B. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Good eye. Went from a chicken eye to a hawk eye. Up next is number 11, Territory War. Three kings have become entangled. Oh, I was hoping it would be the old guy with the mustache again. Become entangled in a territory dispute over the land shown below. They have decided to divide the land by coloring it red, blue, and yellow after their national colors. Was this Fire Emblem Three Houses? Uh, the, the rule for dividing land is that each territory must not border another territory of the same color. If A is red and B is blue, what color is C? Circle the colors king to enter your answer. Your hint? Try actually marking the territories using the memo function to make sure you don't make adjacent ones the same color. It'd help if I had multiple colors to choose from in the stinking memo function, but I don't. But C is supposed to be blue. And now to test my theory. And there we have it. That's right. Up next is number 12, a sure win. In this game, players take turns moving stones one space up, down, left, right, or diagonally to an open space. The goal is to line up three of your stones as in tic-tac-toe. Based on the board layout below, there is one move that white can make to ensure a white victory in the following turn. Make that move and tap submit. Here's your hint. In this setup, black is one move away from victory. If you don't block black's winning move, you will lose. So you see where a white stone needs to go, right? Try the one in the middle! And now to test my theory. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Way to go! Did you see the answer right away? Uh, yeah, in some sort of way I did. Oh, we got ourselves the Mobus Puzzle. 
By twisting a thin ribbon of paper once and forming a ring with it, you can make a ring with one continuous surface. If you started to draw a line on one side, it would eventually cover both sides and join back up with itself. This is the famous Mobus strip. Now if you cut along the line with a pair of scissors, which shape would you with the paper make? A, B, or C? Here's your hint. You know, twisting before forming a ring yields a completely different result than cutting an untwisting ring. Uh, it does? Well, it certainly wouldn't create two separate rings, that wouldn't make any sense, so the answer is B. Consider this puzzle solved. Now I'm just wondering what the heck happened to Luke, he just like disappeared off the face of the planet, but whatever. I'm fine seeing Leighton, he's always nice to see. Very, very good. Just blazing right through these. Too many bridges, too many bridges. There are so many rivers running through this town. They built 12 bridges. It's possible to cross each bridge only once in your way to the goal, but which letter would you have to start at to do this? The key to the number of bridges is connected to each spot. Take a close look. The answer is not B for once, but A. Consider this puzzle solved. Huh, wonderful. That's right. The halfway point, sort of. Here we have a pentagon with equal sides. I've shown in figure one, a square with sides of the same length is as one side of the pentagon sits flush against the five-sided shape. It's labeled with an arrow pointing up. If you flip the square along the pentagon as shown in figure two, the arrow on the square changes direction. Using the diagram below, figure out which direction the arrow faces if you continue to flip the square along the pentagon counterclockwise back to its original position. Here's your hint. The puzzle may seem like a pain to solve, but if you follow the example given and visualize each of the steps, it's really not all that hard. If you use a guide, it's really not that hard. Try sketching out each flip of the square using the memo function. Uh, the solution is you need to put a B. You just say B. This should do the trick. Okay, you just click it. I had to drag it over there, but whatever. Huh? Wonderful. You did it! Hooray! Up next is a row of dice, number 16. A number of dice are arranged in a row as shown below. Can you figure out which die A through D belongs in the spot marked with a question mark? All the dice are arranged so that where one die touches another, the two faces that are touching have the same number of, on them. Assume all the dice are identical. Well, like I die identical, whatever. Can you see any ones or sixes? Hmm. Huh. No, I can't. The solution is C. And now to test my theory. <laughs> oh, the next is another stinging sliding puzzle. Why do you hate me, Professor Layton? I was on the loose. I repay his stinking debt. Yeah, right. My stinking butt. He just got trapped again. Oh no, it looks like the mouse fell asleep and got himself trapped again. While he was napping, the owners of the house piled all sorts of blocks around him. Can you clear a path to help the little guy out? Uh, can't just pick him up and get him out of here on his own. Whatever. There's lots of open space in this puzzle, so you'd think it'd be easy to shift things around. But clearing a path could be surprisingly difficult. To beat this one, you'll need to use the, ind the indentations on some of the blocks effectively. Oh, and try to get that straight orange block above the U-shaped blue one at the top of the screen. Let's get started. There you go. And now to test my theory. Your theory of whether or not you actually solved the puzzle? We have it. it worked. He's free! That's twice now you say this mouse. Maybe he should dig up a little cheese to say thanks. Dig up cheese? Wait, you can find it underground? Puzzle number 18. The ant takes a walk. It's like my autobiography. A wire cube sits on the floor below. One ant sits at the point under the white arrow. 
Starting from its current position, the ant wants to walk on each wire in the cube without ever crossing any length uh, of wire twice. To do this, you need to add a single wire to the cube. In which area, A, B, or C, should you add the wire to make it this possible? Note that the ant may cross over a point where two or more wires meet as many times as it likes. Select a letter to answer. Your hint? Essentially, this puzzle is asking you where to add a wire in order to create a 3D shape. You could draw without ever lifting your pen from the page or retracing a line. Two of the potential answers let you do this, but only one works when you start from the point under the white arrow. The solution is a C. And now to test my theory. Huh, wonderful. Good job. Puzzle number 19 is called Rupert and Bale, or in the UK, John and Bill. I don't know why the English localization has such a hatred for people named John, but whatever. Rupert and Bill are playing in the park and they start chatting. Hey Bill, three years from now you'll be twice the age. Oh, another age thing. There's the age I'm now, right? Says Rupert. Bill pauses for a moment then responds. Well get this, when I'm twice the age I am now, I'll be three times your current age. Crazy, right? So how old are Rupert and Bill? Just so you know, neither of the boys are 10 yet. Like he's a lollipop in his crotch. Oh no, it's in his hand, never mind. Since both of the boys are younger than 10, there are only so many combinations of ages you need to explore. Don't forget, Bill is the older of the two boys. Uh, so the answer is nine? Wait, what do I say? So, are you serious? The official answer is 69. It's a Christmas miracle. And you thought I was crazy for choosing this as Let's Play number 69. It was planned all along. Except not really. Like seriously, I actually wanted to have like a very hilarious game picked for Let's Play number 69, but I had nothing set up for and like, there's nothing I have in mind even still, like what would have been a good fit? Conquer maybe? If I hadn't LP'd it yet, I guess that would have been a good Let's Play number 69, but I have no idea. Number 20, the tape shape. Two pieces of tape, uh, two pieces of tape the same length and the same width are shaped into rings and then stuck together at point P as shown below. If you were to cut two pieces along the dotted lines, which of the four shapes below would you, would be formed? Choose an answer from A to D by circling it. Your hint? Did you notice that point P would be divided into four sections? Uh, yes, I totally did. And I also noticed that the answer is D. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Amazing! The correct answer is D. It almost seems impossible, but try it for yourself. It'd be kind of cool if, like, the Layton games did come with, like, little trinkets that were used for specific puzzles. Like, the ticket thing in the instruction booklet is amazing. I kind of wish they gave you, like, more little pieces of paper that you use in certain puzzles. Formulas like the first one are a familiar sight to students. One day, a mathematician thought up the second formula. This formula basically took all the letters of the alphabet, subtracted them from X, and then multiplied them all together. Since the formula was so long, the mathematician used dot 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 to indicate a part of the formula. Soon after, he discovered that no matter what numbers he substituted for any of the letters, the formula always yielded the same answer. What is that answer? What is that hint? In the hidden segment of the formula is something very important. The answer is actually zero. And now to test my theory. Huh, wonderful. Good thinking. Math, 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 math. And then Satan said, let's put the alphabet into math. Number 22, how many gems? Two thieves are hatching a plan. Huh, so while the gems are out on display in the jewelry store, only one is real? That's right. It's fourth from the top, second from the bottom, third from the right, and third from the left. That's the one we're after. Supposing that the gems are ordered in uniform rows and columns, how many gems are there in total, counting both the real ones and the fakes? Here's your hint. You're only seeing part of the conversation. Try drawing a picture of the gems layout. The solution is 25. Consider this puzzle solved. 
Like seriously, Luke just dropped off the face of the planet. Maybe it's past his bedtime right now. Puzzle unsolved. Dazzling. Who's Mary? Not me. <laughs> Walking around, you overhear the neighbors talking about a family that consists of a married father and mother, a son, and a daughter. Mary is certainly younger than Dan. Say, Mary is older than Lisa, isn't she? Sam is younger than Dan, for sure. No, Lisa and Sam aren't a couple. Of the four statements above, two are true and two are false. Figure out which statements are accurate and check the boxes of the two people who are married. Statements A and C are correct. That's a pretty nice hint. And the married couple is Sam? Uh, check mark. Okay, that's what you do. Sam and Mary are the married couple. This should Mary's the married couple. I feel like anyone named Mary is like infuriated with her name because people are always like, oh, you're going to marry Mary? Her, her, her. Mary's married. Mary's married. Eh, whatever. What number are we on? I seem to have miscalculated how long this would take. Mike has always been terrible at math. Same here, Mike. He's asked to multiply a certain number by 9, then add 7, but instead he multiplies by 7 and then adds 9. He soon notices his error and starts to panic. When he tries to do the problem correctly, he ends up getting the same answer as when he made the mistake the first time. It's all an accident, but what is the certain number the one marked with a question mark below? Try creating an equation. There's only one answer. Then again, you might just be able to use intuition to guess the answer. Oh, so you mean it's a simple answer? In that case, it's going to be 1. Not a 7. A 1. Consider this puzzle solved. Huh. Wonderful. Well done, the number is one. If you do the math, it all works out. One. Hey, oh, wow, really did work out. Ooh, three ladies. Hello, ladies. Number 25. What are the names of these three ladies? A says, A says, the woman next to me is Judy. B says, I'm Ellie, pleasure to meet you. C says, the woman next to me, her name is Anna. Keep track of what each lady said to help you deduce their names. There's a catch, though. While Judy is always truthful, Ellie occasionally lies, and Anna tells fibs every chance she gets. Arrange the nameplates and at the bottom of the screen so that each plate correctly labels its owner. The other two ladies keep talking about B. Who could she possibly be? Remember that Judy never lies. So A is Ellie, B is Anna, and C is Judy. And now to test my theory. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. That's right. A is Ellie, B is Anne, C is Judy. And a whole lot of other repeated words. Up next, the lions escape. Free the animals from the zoo. A lion has escaped from the zoo. It appears that you <clears throat> have to clear your throat. The zookeeper forgot to lock the cage. This lion is so ferocious that it even scared all the other lions out of its cage. You are the only person left in the zoo. Circle the safest place to hide until help arrives. Here's your hint. Don't look for a place where the lion won't find you. Instead, try looking for a place where the lion can't get you. The solution is the lion's own cage. Consider this puzzle solved. Huh, wonderful. Well done, you want to hide in an escaped lion's cage since the zookeeper, you since you're the zookeeper, you can go in and lock the door. Because the lion is now running around the zoo, hiding inside the cage is your safest option. I like how the lion's just like human? Lion? I don't know. Up next, pattern recognition. Which pattern matches the one in the upper left corner? Is it A, B, C, or B? C. The upper left pattern has had its contents flipped left and right, and its colors inverted and changed to black and white. Here's your hint. First try looking at the centers of the patterns. You, the really hard part is the difference in the triangles around the edges. Look closely at the shades of gray. The answer is B once again. This should do the trick. Huh, wonderful. Good eye. The answer is B, as always. I don't know why B is so popular in this game. 
Because diabolical box. I don't know. Suits in a row. The lower 16 cards. There are four cards from each suit. Diamonds, clubs, spades, and hearts. The cards are arranged in a 4x4 four four grid and shown below, and three cards have already been put down. Arrange the remaining cards so that each vertical column, horizontal row, and diagonal line of four cards contains one card from each suit. Tap a card to change its suit. Here's your hint. Oh god. In the second row, the card above the club must be a diamond, and there's a club below, a heart diagonally above it, and a spade to the right. To the left of the diamond must be a club, since there's a heart above it, and because you now know that there's a diamond and a spade in the second row. The lone remaining space in the second row has got to be a heart. Proceed in this way and find the answer. This is a spade. This is a club. This is a diamond. This is a club. Diamond. Heart. Diamond. A spade. Heart. Spade. Heart. Diamond. And club. Consider this puzzle solved. And there we have it. You did it. You did it. Again, I make a reference to the door movie coming soon to theaters. Puzzle number 29, Chibi Robo. Scientists in a research lab have built a robot to clean the halls. Because the robot, so Roomba, because the robot isn't quite complete yet, all the turns it makes can either be all left or all right. The corners where it turns can be programmed. The scientists want to give the robot a route so it cleans all the halls within cleaning any section twice. Without cleaning any section twice, circle the point where the robot should start this routine. The robot can move through each intersection up to two times. You should try as many different routes as possible, but if you really can't work it out, there's only one place that's a little different from the others. That's the spot. Is it E? That's not a circle, but I'll take it. Consider this puzzle solved. And there we have it. Affirmative. Ooh, getting fancy because a robot is in this puzzle. Cracking the code. Speaking of robots. Find the four number code that opens the safe. You can use the number 0 through 5. Jesus Christ! Number 0 through 5, but each number can only be used once. The small lights next to each row of numbers are the key to finding the code, as they tell you how much in the common that row has with the final code. Each white light indicates a number that matches one of the code, but is in a different place within a sequence. An orange light indicates a number that is in the code and is a correct spot. Tap the numbers at the bottom to enter the code. From the lights, you could tell that the four digits are 3102. Finding the correct order is just a matter of checking the other numbers. Through some educated well guesses, uh, might work just as well. Uh, the answer is one, zero, three, two. And now to test my theory. And there we have it. Okay, final three. Let's get this cracking. Crazy dice. There are two dice, A and B. The pictures show each die from two different angles. Maybe the dice maker was up to no good, but the dots on each face are all completely random. You could see all the faces here, so no matter how you roll each die, if you added together the numbers visible with the two top faces, the highest number you could get would be 9. Knowing this, what is the lowest number you could get if you rolled the dice and added the numbers visible on the two top faces? The puzzle is a bit mean. That's your hint? Jeez, okay, the answer is... I guess it is a bit mean, because you wouldn't think this... You think it would be impossible two dice, but the answer is one. This should do the <laughs> I like how that's the hint. That's, that might actually be my favorite hint so far. And there we have it. That's right, the dice don't have to be lined up... Oh, wow. <laughs> they don't have to be lined up like that. They are in the picture. If you position the dice in the picture above, you get the lowest possible number, one. Of course, it's not likely anyone would ever roll this configuration naturally. Unless you're Duke Devlin. Number tiles. Rearrange the three tiles so that they display a number divisible by 43. Simple enough. Try handling the tiles in different ways. Maybe you'll notice something. Uh. Huh? 
Oh, that's how you do it. You can rotate it to make it a nine instead of a six. So one, two, nine is your answer. This should do the trick. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Sharp thinking, once you notice that 6 can be turned upside down to form a 9, you can make it 129. The final puzzle, the bus's route. A very large bus approaches a town. Since the streets of this town are so narrow, the bus can only turn at corners where there are no buildings, and then only in the direction the corner allows. The bus arrives from the south, so you can find the shortest route of the bus if it wants to take to the east. Trace a line from the starting point to the goal. Drive until you hit a wall, then turn right. Keep going until you hit a wall, then it's up to you to finish this puzzle out. It's up to you to puzzle out what? I don't know. Uh, what do you want from me, game? Go all the way up here, and down, and then back around. And down over here, bring this up, and you're good. This should do the trick. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. And with that, we have finished all the puzzles in Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. Sort of. There are, just like with Curious Village, there are three puzzles that I guess go unused? They're on the latent guide, so they're in the game somewhere. I don't know where they, where they, you find them. I think they're just unused puzzles that are in the game's code. Uh, I'll just show them to you right here because I unfortunately can't uh, access them in game. A small bird has fallen into a hole at a golf course. This particular hole is extremely deep and has a sharp bend in the middle, making it impossible to retrieve the bird by hand. To make matters worse, the ground around the hole is made of a hard clay, so digging the bird out isn't an option either. However, there's something commonly found at a golf course that you could use to get the bird out. What do you use to safely rescue the bird from the hole? The hint is, the bird will need to do some of the work. The solution is, there was a puzzle similar to this in Curious Village, and the solution was water. But the solution to this one is sand, actually. You could slowly drop sand into the hole so the bird can climb out. That sounds kind of terrifying. Like, at least with water, it could swim up to the top. But I guess there's no guarantee the bird could swim. But putting sand, I feel like it would, like, what if it doesn't make it out or something? I don't know. That seems scary. Uh, this other puzzle, Boxes of Treats. Uh, if I didn't have the name for the other one, if I forgot to say it. What's it called? A uh, bird in a hole. <laughs> that was the puzzle. The name was bird in a hole. Yeah, hey, I guess you call it a bird. Yeah, whatever. Uh, three boxes. Each contain two delicious sweet treats. One box contains two cookies. Another has two pieces of candy. While the third box contains one cookie and one piece of candy. Blindfolded, you take one of the treats from one of the boxes. Removing the blindfold, you see that you've taken a cookie. What are the odds of a remaining treat in the box you took? The cookie from is a cookie rather than a piece of candy. Your hint is, you could have taken any one of the three cookies. And the answer is that it's twice as likely that the remaining treat is a cookie. And the final puzzle, different cats. How fitting, considering what I'm doing tomorrow. Which of the four panels on the right matches the one on the left? The panel on the left is a negative image in the black and white and has been flipped to the, from left to right. The hint is panel D doesn't match as the bottom of the ribbon is different, so it's not D. The solution is one more for the road, B. And there you go. That is every single puzzle in Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. Oh, once again, thank you, Hannah, for making this video possible. You're responsible for the Curious Village bonus video and for this one as well. I've already been informed that Hannah does not have the downloadable puzzles for uh, Unwound Future, so I'm gonna have to seek out another friend to get those puzzles when we get to that Let's Play, so that'll be another problem for another day. However, for right now, this Let's Play has finally, at long last, come to a close. Like I said, we'll return one day 
in case we need to revisit a certain hidden door, but that will be rather far off once we've gone on one more adventure. But for now, it's finally time for the good professor to have a well-deserved rest. Thank you all for watching my Let's Play of Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see all of you next Let's Play. Sweet dreams.